I'm going to be talking about the practicalities of attending remote hearings and what the future might hold for jury trials as lockdown continues. What is currently working? Administrative sentencing and bail hearings are able to run without the need for advocates, defendants or judges to physically attend the courtroom. And when not laced with technological difficulties, they do allow a court list to run almost as normal. Defendants can be arraigned and have pleas taken without physically attending court and decisions are being made to allow some cases to move along despite lockdown. The video call facility, in comparison to audio only hearings, allow for almost everyone physically present to be able to see each other. How are they not working? Trials, of course, are still unable to take place and there are technical issues with being able to see and hear all participants due to a mix of people sometimes present in the courtroom, sometimes over video link and sometimes appearing only via audio link. Defendants that are currently in prison are not able to join the main video link and be heard clearly. Instead, they are being dialed in through the courtroom video link facility and a laptop connected to the video call is placed in front of the screen. While well, this is causing issues across the board with their sound quality, with echoes and really with the defendant being able to participate at all in the proceedings. Sometimes the only way to reduce the echo in the courtroom is to mute the defendant's video link, which means the defendant cannot contribute at all to the hearing. Defendants who are on bail need access to equipment that can video call in order to plead, so some have to attend in person to their local court in order to use the linking facilities. Those issues are all when the technology has actually connected successfully. Of course, significant delays are still caused when it does not go smoothly. And there is a significant lack of communication when hearings are delayed that often leave advocates and parties on the end of a phone call not knowing when it'll be answered. So how can we mitigate what isn't working? His Honour Judge Blair QC circulated guidance on Tuesday which included requiring advocates instructed to defend to have at least a telephone conference with their defendant, if on bail, no later than the day before the hearing. He also set out that if a conference is required with a defendant in prison on the day of the hearing, the advocate must contact the court no later than midday, the day before the hearing, in order to facilitate this. Further, if pleas are to be entered, the court should be notified in advance so that a stand down report can be arranged if possible. Clearly, communication with clients and with opponents before the hearing is particularly important now, as it is not guaranteed that there will be time to discuss matters before the judge joins the link. It is also notable that some courts have members of the press on the video call, so discussions even before a judge enters may not be private. To alleviate the more practical issues, anyone conducting a hearing can have their microphone muted when not talking, as it reduces the risk of the speaker's audio cutting out due to background noise being picked up. Can then remember to unmute their microphone when they speak. Using headphones can help with a microphone if at all possible. iPhone headphones work well as they have a built-in microphone, and this can increase the quality of the audio. Often the courtroom microphone will produce an echo, which can make it very difficult to speak coherently. It can be worth suggesting that the court microphone is also muted while others on the video link are speaking, as that can remove the echo. I'll move on to look at what the future might look like. The topic that has appeared most frequently in the media and amongst legal professionals is whether jury trials could be conducted safely during the COVID-19 lockdown. The first suggestion is diplock courts. Jury trials could become optional for a period and defendants could opt for a trial where the circuit judge sits as a tribunal of law and fact. Could this work? The need for the defendant to consent would mean that he would still have a right to be tried by a jury of his peers, but could elect for a more expedient trial. It would reduce but not eliminate the COVID-19 risk. Judges would have to give detailed reasons for findings of guilt, which could be examined on appeal. But the potential issues. Would it be considered second-class justice, with the defendants and complainants feeling cheated, depending on the result? And does the option of expedient trials create a risk to jury trials in the future? 
a potential concern is that the attractiveness of a much more cost effective, quicker trial could prompt the government into pushing to reduce or even abolish jury trials in their entirety. Although the same has not happened in Australia, which introduced this option. Practically, would a lawyer ever advise a defendant to do this? Potentially not, given the difference in conviction rate between, for example, magistrates, courts and jury trials. A suggestion where it could work well could be a case where the defence believe that the prosecution will fail to prove an element of the offence. It could be lower risk to have a legal expert examining the evidence rather than an unpredictable jury. But would it serve its purpose? It may not effectively alleviate the backlog of jury trials if very few defendants would actually elect. Another option is remote jury trials. The Law Society Gazette reported on the 20th of April that the campaign group Justice had run an experimental, fully remote mock jury trial to test if it could be a fair alternative, which they said worked well. Could it work in practice? Well, it could be conducted safely, removing all risk of COVID transmission. Everyone could be heard and seen clearly, and jurors would be comfortable not having to sit very close to each other. It ensures dignity of the defendant if on bail, without the defendant in the physical dock, it could alleviate any prejudices that jurors may come in with and might make the process less intimidating for vulnerable defendants or witnesses. However, the negatives. Would witnesses and jurors feel a lack of solemnity? Would they be more likely to give unreliable evidence or jurors less able to concentrate when there's a rift between them and the trial? with all of the unpredictability of their home environment that we're all now knowing so well. If the defendant is in prison, would the same issues arise with being able to adequately participate in their trial? If so, would defendants be able to elect to wait until an in-person trial could be held? The technological issues. If a juror drops out at any point, could this be the subject of an appeal? Would judges be able to ensure privacy? There is no surety that ju jurors would keep their discussions confidential. A lot of trust would have to be put in them. And how could their responsibilities be enforced? And lastly, the point of equality. Would all jurors have the technology and broadband connection to be able to participate? And if they don't, would it be provided? Or would jurors be chosen based on whether they could be able to participate easily? Would this create a social imbalance in the jury construction? The last viable option is socially distant trials. The Lord Chief Justice of England and Wales told Radio 4 last week that it might be necessary to look at such radical measures, for example, reducing the number of jurors from 12 to 7, as happened during the Second World War. Is that fair? The current minimum number is, of course, nine if there are issues with current impaneled jurors, but only a unanimous verdict would result in a conviction. Would defendants feel they had justice if they were convicted by only seven of their peers? A different suggestion by the Lord Chief Justice was that cases could be heard by a full jury in larger buildings such as university lecture halls. This could work in that lecture halls are currently not being used. They have facilities for amplifying and recording those speaking and are big enough that social distancing could be enforced. There would also be plenty of space for the public and the press to attend and universities would have seminar rooms appropriate for jury discussions. The issues, uh, the ones easily noted, that the recording facilities may not have been built for recording more than one speaker across different areas of the theatre, and the security, as lecture theatres may not now be built to house secure hearings such as jury trials. Is the risk of COVID eliminated? There will always be shared spaces, corridors, restrooms, and passing each other to get to their seats. If one juror reported symptoms, all participating in the trial would have to self-isolate for 14 days, which would essentially prevent the trial from being heard. And the last issue is who would attend. Jurors would be taking a personal risk to attend court as they may have to use public transport and there will always be some infection risk when attending a public building. Would those falling into the vulnerable person category be excused or would it be optional? And who would then choose to take such a risk? What does that mean for the makeup of the jury? The same issues apply to the suggestion that trials could take place with a full jury uh, across multiple courts in the Crown Court building. 
the issues as to security and appropriateness would of course be eliminated, but there will never be a zero risk way of facilitating social distancing. Currently, there is a jury trials working group that is working with Public Health England and Wales to assess whether any court spaces could be appropriate for socially distant trials. And a part heard trial with no witnesses was listed in the Old Bailey this week, which started Monday. It will be interesting to see how social distancing measures were implemented and how successful they were. The final option is the thought I will leave you with, which is this. Is it viable to wait until this all blows over? What are the possible consequences of not having any jury trials until lockdown ends? Social distancing measures are likely to be in place long after the lockdown ends, potentially until the end of the year. So is it viable to simply wait until trials can be conducted as they were? Probably not. We are likely to see change in the very near future. Thank you for listening. <laughs>